Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTGB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 2 talking about testing throughout software development lifecycle and we are continuing ahead with our second segment that is 2.2 test levels and test types. As it is longer, we are also still in 2.2.1 talking about the test levels of the testing and certainly today we are talking about the next level in our sequence which is system testing. Well, when it comes to system testing, many people quite often think that most of the testing is being conducted at component level, integration level, or component integration level. Then why system testing is even required? Now, of course, system testing is something very crucial in terms of seeing a product as a whole. That means an entire application as a single unit to be seen is being tested as this part of testing that is system testing as one of the level are critical in order to check an application as a whole product together. But sometimes it is very important to understand that there are certain criteria, certain constraints, certain factors or parameters which cannot be tested prior to system testing. For example, if I talk about environment related factors or configurations of the system software and hardware cannot be measured until unless you have the application as whole. For example, in component, component testing, you're limited to programs. In integrations, you may have collection of modules. In component integration, you're still limited to one or two modules, but just talking about the interfaces between components. But where is the whole product? So I cannot go ahead and install, or probably I cannot talk about the factors which may return a defect depending on the environment. And certainly those software and hardware combinations which might be required as a minimum software configuration for running the product, right? And on top of it, after system testing, I can do a lot of non-functional level testing, which satisfies the base product that it is working functionally fine. And in that context, it is very, very important that system testing gives us one of the milestones that the system is functionally ready and can be you know, moved ahead with all other non-functional levels. In fact, some of the correlative non-functional levels which can be conducted with respect to system testing are coexistence, portability, interoperability, and many other such levels which do satisfy either the configuration, the compatibility of the browsers, or installability and deinstallability of the product, or non-conflictness with any other product which the business might be using on the same environment. So in that context, system testing do play a vital role and that's where we want to give you some quick outline of what the system testing is all about. So to talk about system testing focuses on overall behavior and capabilities of an entire system or product, often including functional testing of end-to-end tasks and the non-functional testing of quality characteristics. However, let me remind you system testing is not the level which conducts non-functional testing. It's just a functional level again and will be used uh, are seen as an exit criteria to get into all the non-functional executions. The point being made here that it is used to a uh, system testing focuses on non-functional characteristics. That means right from here, all the non-functional characteristics will also kick off in parallel. But once completed, it will be more stabilized and you can go and run a performance test, security test, or interoperability test, etc. For some non-functional quality characteristics, it is preferable to test them on a complete system in a representative test environment. And that's what I think I was just talking about. Probably I was one point ahead and certainly giving you that what you meant. So even usability is one of those examples of non-functional testing, which does cater the whole system's need and user friendliness of that. We'll be talking about non-functional testing in our upcoming tutorials. So stay tuned for that. But right now, just keep it limited to terminology. Further to add, of course, uh, using simulations of subsystems is also possible. System testing may be performed by independent test team and is related to specification for the system. Now here we want to bring back that concept of chapter one that, hey, it's not necessary that all the test levels will be done by the same people or same set of team. So component testing is generally the ownership of development team. Into component integration can be done by developers or testers or same way integration testing can be done by a separate testing team and within functional levels also, 
a different team might be required to perform the system testing compared to that of integration. So we may have any level of independence between the test levels of our own functional testing also. And that's where we want to highlight that, that this level of testing can be conducted by an independent test team to that of what other levels have been conducted. Also here, one other point which was brought up that it is uh, using a system which is either a simulation of certain products or certain services or subsystems of the real one. Now here, if I talk about some of the criticality that we don't talk about production as an environment to be used for system testing. Production is live. That means we don't do system testing in a live environment. So we try to have as close as possible to target system in order to conduct system. So it is just like a system testing environment, but we do understand that it is not a live environment. So everything will be still pre-prod and conducted in a virtual environment. Also to add further, system testing might be required to address incomplete requirements and any other product risk related to the product. Now, incomplete requirements simply means that I may have such certain requirements which might not be very, very clear and up to the mark when defining it during the requirement gathering phase. Sometimes we don't even have a clarity that how this requirement will fit into this product and where exactly to place it. But once you have the system available, then you have a better visibility or 360 view of your own product and you know better where exactly to place it or where exactly to implement it. So I'm not talking about that. Will the development be on hold till, I, till then? Answer is no, it will be developed, but placing the functionality or feature at what point of time during the product or what during the sequence of activities can be established here. For an example, if I talk about the reviews to be collected on Zomato, right? Zomato is a food delivery application right here. So most of us know that and uh, assume that the customer had a requirement on the review to be collected from customer that how was the delivery and how was the food? So the question was the feature was implemented, but we were not sure at what point to collect this from the customer, like when to pop up this. Is that on the next order, which will be too late? Or is that like before you get it? No, that's not possible. So as we built the product, we realized that the moment you collect the order, the delivery boy will mark the status as delivered. And the same moment you will be also having the phone in hand. And at the same time, you'll be looking at your phone. And that's where the pop-up will happen that, hey, would you like to rate the delivery experience? Was it on time, polite, minimum calling and sort of thing. So that's what we are talking about when we say incomplete requirements. Okay. Sometimes we are not even sure where exactly to place it. Then now, now I see from the 360 view that this is the place where I can put it best. And when it comes to risk, which are related to product, they can only be addressed when the system is ready because that's the product risk. So I can go and run some specialized test cases in order to mitigate this risk. However, given that these product risks will return some byproducts of project risk, that means what would be the reason for those risks? And we would start mitigating them as soon as possible, right from component level itself, or maybe much earlier, like from requirement gathering or design phase two. But again, we will deep dive into the risk and testing in our chapter five. So don't worry about that. We will discuss in detail that what is risk, what is product risk, what is project risk and so on. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. I hope you had a good understanding of system testing. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.